The scars of Bosnia's civil war have never fully healed, but for years this divided country has kept a fragile peace. Now, with Ukraine on fire and Europe on high alert for Russian meddling elsewhere, Bosnian Serb leader Milorad Dodik is threatening to secede, raising the prospect of conflict once more. We've been to investigate. While Ukraine endures the full onslaught of a Russian invasion, 500 miles south, another European country teeters on the verge of conflict, the Balkan Republic of Bosnia. Hardline Serb nationalist Milorad Dodik, leader of the country's Republika Srpska region, is threatening to secede, a move which would spark internal conflict and could once again engulf the Western Balkans in bloodshed. I believe that Dodik is an ordinary opportunist, but he is a man with a plan, an opacity plan. And even as the specter of war hangs over the Balkan Republic, those guilty of dreadful crimes are now being rehabilitated. It's not that they deny, they celebrate genocide. They celebrate war criminals. Dodik's administration has rehearsed war games outside the capital, Sarajevo, while elsewhere, Russian-backed paramilitaries have sprung up. Worst case scenario would be to have an all-out war in Bosnia. Twenty-six years ago, the Bosnian war finally came to an end with the signing of the Dayton Peace Accords. The conflict between Bosnia's three ethnic and religious groups, the Orthodox Serbs, the Muslim Bosniaks, and the Catholic Croats, was Europe's bloodiest since the Second World War, leaving the country in deep trauma. There is no any doubt that experience of the siege and the aggression on Bosnia and Herzegovina affected all of us who, who, who lived here. The Dayton Accords had to somehow recognize the divergent aspirations of the three ethnic groups, splitting the country into two semi-autonomous regions. The Bosniak and Croat-dominated Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the mostly Serb entity of Republika Srpska. A tripartite presidency was established and continues today with a member from each of the three ethnic groups. UN peacekeeping troops, mostly from Europe, were tasked to oversee the implementation of Dayton, of which a small contingent remains, known as U4. For several months now, this precarious peace accord has been threatening to unravel. We need to be very vigilant, and that's why we decided to beef up the international troops here. We've decided to double the size of U4 to 1,200 soldiers, uh, which will be coming in in the next days. In October 2021, Milorad Dodik, the Bosnian Serb member of the tripartite presidency, announced that Republika Srpska would withdraw from the federal judiciary and tax regime, effectively paralyzing the Bosnian government. He has long called for secession, but Dodik, who declined to be interviewed for this film, has his allies and is a regular guest of the Serbian president, Aleksandar Vucic. What do you think of Milorad Dodik? He's a very controversial figure. Well, I would uh, like to rephrase that, saying that uh, we are aware of the fact that there is a deep political crisis with many factors involved. And sometimes it seems like a kind of 
oversimplification to point the finger to solely one person being that Milra Dodik. But closer to home, alarm bells rang when Dodik declared his intention to remove Bosnian Serb troops from the Bosnian army in order to create a separate Serb force, a move strongly backed by Russia. In the mid-90s, we had uh, uh, three warring armies pitted against each other. So uh, his understanding is that legally, Republika Srpska uh, has a right to have its own army. The Bosnian Serb army of the 1990s is the only armed force in recent history of which almost the entire leadership has been convicted of crimes against humanity. These crimes included the three-year siege of Sarajevo, when Bosnian Serb forces shelled the city from Mount Yaohina, resulting in 14,000 civilian deaths. So in October 2021, when Bosnian Serb police carried out military-style drills on the same mountainside, the residents of Sarajevo were horrified. The Bosnian Serbs currently, they have uh, a very militarized police. They have a very militarized reserve forces, which means that basically they can very quickly mobilize reserve police officers, hand them Kalashnikovs, and have a proper army in a few days. Many in the Bosnian capital see Russia's hand in these events. It's true that over the years, Milorad Dodik has had numerous well-publicized meetings with Vladimir Putin. But of equal concern in Sarajevo is his association with other more shadowy figures connected to the Kremlin. The most important of these is Konstantin Malofiev, dubbed Putin's billionaire. Konstantin Malofiev is one of those people who is always ready to defend Orthodox as a religion and its Orthodox brothers from Eastern Ukraine to Western Balkan by creating frozen conflict, justifying it by the need to protect its Orthodox brothers. Malofiev is the owner of Zagrad TV, which pumps out a daily diet of nationalist propaganda across Russia, mixing religion with politics. When we met him in 2018, this is what Malofiev had to say about Vladimir Putin. President Putin, uh, um, is our leader that uh, given to us by God, the leader who can make so many steps for Russia to be back a historical way of how Russia uh, developed before revolution. Malofiev had previously financed the pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. Indeed, in 2014, Malofiev's former employees became the defense minister and the prime minister of the breakaway Donetsk People's Republic. When we asked about his role in the conflict, he declined to discuss it. I told this so many times. That was just a humanitarian aid that I did there, so please, I just do not want to go there. Nonetheless, as a consequence of his activity in Donbass, the billionaire was placed on an EU and US blacklist. Later that year, Malofiev turned his attention to Bosnia. There is a long-standing uh, support coming from, from Moscow for, for, for Mr. Dodik. Malofiev, seen here with Dodik, appeared in Republika Srpska in 2014, along with 150 Cossack veterans from Donbass. Dodik was running for president, and the arrival of the separatist fighters caused considerable alarm amongst Dodik's opponents. Fast forward to 2018, and Malofiev appears on the scene again, offering $200 million by way of a bonds purchase and unspecified logistical support to Dodik. He was once again contesting the presidency. When Malofiev's plane landed in Bosnia ahead of the vote, the authorities prevented him from entering the country. The decision by the Bosnian intelligence to ban him entry was taken effect and Malofiev returned to Belgrade and from Belgrade to Moscow. But it isn't only Russian billionaires whom Dodik counts amongst his friends. Two-time Palm d'Or winner Amir Kustaritsa is also an admirer. The film director was given land seized from Bosniaks to build his Andritsgrad townlet in the heart of the ancient city of Visegrad. 
it's really bad taste. But bad taste is less problem than the fact that he was doing that on the territory where the people were burned alive, where all those people who live there don't live anymore. So it's something which I really, as the human being, it's hard to understand how it is possible. The complex, comprising 50 stone buildings, the centerpiece of which is an immense Orthodox church, has been dubbed a Bosnian Serb theme park. A mosaic depicts Dodik, Kustaritsa and other notable Serbs frolicking in a rural idyll. But perhaps more than anything else, say critics, Andritskrad represents Republika Srpska's denial of the past, and that the sheer scale of atrocities committed against the Bosniaks in Visegrad is simply impossible to comprehend. <laughs> Siluju pa odu, ženu siluju pa je zapali u kući pa tuđeš još u veći pakao. Bakira was raped three times when the war came to Visegrad. She now hunts for war criminals. Before the war, 65% of the town's residents were Bosniaks. But within a few months of the start of the conflict, only Serbs remained. The search continues for the bodies of the 3,000 Bosniaks murdered by Serbian police and paramilitaries in Visegrad, which included some 600 women and 119 children. Their bodies were thrown into the River Drina from the 16th century Mehmet Pasha Sokolovic Bridge, a World Heritage Site which now forms a backdrop to Kustaritsa's folly. Nušava krvava je drina treka. Uvijek je samo mogao čuti krikove, vidiš ti dan i poznaš. Uvijek je se samo mogao da čuješ krikove, onaj pljasak u rijeku drinu. Beživotna bošnjačka tijela su plutala kao cijepke. Trenutno koliko ja znam, jedan Fouad Hatzic tells us it was his land on which the director built his townlet. He says he'd been trying ever since to get his property back through the courts. Nakon kjel su nas istirati za Andrić grada, kad je Kusturica rekao onaj šta je problem, ovo je lijepo, ovo je fino urađeno. Jeste to lijepo, ali... It's not surprising memories are bitter here. The town of Visegrad holds other darker secrets. This is the Velina Vlas Hotel, where during the first weeks of the war, more than 200 Bosniak women were raped. Da ne govorim o ženama koje su silovane pa na kraju ubijene. U moj Višegrad 92. godine je bio na kapi Dženemskog pakla. Ko razumi šta je Dženemski pakao, moj Višegrad je bio na kapi Dženemskog pakla. Of all the crimes committed during the Bosnia war, and the one which people here are especially fearful of seeing repeated, the Srebrenica massacre stands out. This is the Srebrenica memorial. A museum tells the story. You can see the, the photos that show what was the daily life in the enclave of Srebrenica when it was declared a UN safe area. And also shows the scale of, of genocide. It shows the, the mass grave, the excavation of mass graves. So it shows everything that has to do with genocide in Srebrenica. Almasa was only eight at the time Srebrenica fell to the Bosnian Serb forces. She remembers desperately trying to escape from the town to the nearby UN headquarters, where Dutch peacekeepers were supposed to offer protection to the town's inhabitants. What I remember is that just running towards this, this place from Srebrenica, the screams, the terror, uh, and the fear in everybody's eyes. 
I was little still, so I couldn't run so, so fast. And, you know, there was commotion. You could see a river of people just going in the same direction. So you just tried not to lose each and one of your family members. And my mother, she said, I cannot hold you. So take my clothes and don't let go. However, having reached the UN base, worse was to come. The commanding officer simply handed over the Bosniak refugees to Ratko Mladic, the head of the Bosnian Serbs, who at once started separating the men from the women. More than 8,000 Bosniak men and boys were systematically murdered. The women and some children were sent away on buses. We left this, uh, this place on 13th of July afternoon. Um, and on 11th of July was the, the last, last day when we saw my brother Abdullah alive. In 2021, it became a crime in Bosnia, punishable by up to five years in prison, to deny that the Srebrenica massacre was a genocide. Milorad Dodik sees things differently. Indeed, General Ratko Mladic, the military commander who oversaw the genocide, is still venerated across Republika Srpska, despite the fact that he's now serving life in prison for war crimes. For one people, a certain persona is a criminal. For other people, he is defender of, of their own families. And so we have, we're dealing with a very difficult reality here. But can that really be true of Vladka and Mladic? No comment. This is the January 9th Republika Srpska National Day. Although it is outlawed under Bosnian law, it was celebrated across Republika Srpska and marked by a military-style march past in the de facto capital Banja Luka, in front of Dodik and Vinko Panjarevic, another convicted war criminal, whom the UN War Crimes Tribunal sentenced to 13 years for his role in the Srebrenica genocide. We've come out clearly with uh, how we saw the events uh, uh, on the 9th of January. The, the rhetoric which was used, uh, the, uh, the fact that it, it heightened the tensions in the country, but also the fact that, uh, you know, there were uh, other visitors uh, coming from other countries. These visitors included the Serbian Prime Minister and Serbian Minister of Interior, as well as the Russian Ambassador. What do you think of the celebrations in uh, Banja Luka? Well, it's, uh, it's a holiday of Republika Srpska. Only not far from Sadodic was a convicted war criminal. Do you think that was a good idea? Oh, I wouldn't know. It was not. I was present there, and I was not selecting the guests for for the ceremony. Kao i neki rani postupci ukazuju na to da Ruska Federacija ne poštuje suverenitet Bosne i Hercegovine. It is not only the Russians and Serbians who are supporting Dodic. Hungary's Viktor Orban and the Slovenian Prime Minister Janis Jansa, seen here with Dodik and Serbian President Vucic, are believed to have been involved in devising a controversial European policy document entitled Western Balkans A Way Forward, which began circulating in 2021. It advocated joining a larger part of Republika Srpska territory with Serbia, effectively splitting Bosnia in two. To je jedna glupost koja nema nikakve veze sa realnošću, mislim na taj non paper, koji može samo da zapali požar i u Bosni i Hercegovini, i u regionu, i u Evropi. Many Bosnians also see it as sinister that in the last few years a number of Russian-affiliated paramilitary groups have sprung up in Republika Srpska swearing allegiance not only to Putin, but also to Dodik. So there are a few organizations which represent themselves as humanitarian organizations, which have very strong links with Russia. They are military aged young men who have a sort of military uniform. One such group is called Sveti Georgie, whose leader is Serjan Letic, a criminal with several past convictions, including weapons trading. Letic says his group, which enjoys financial support from the Russian embassy, 
is a humanitarian organization. When we called on him, he was reluctant to talk. Sergeant says that he's not interested in filming an interview. He did say he'd have talked if we were Russian. What is particularly alarming about Letich's group is that they have based themselves in the village of Lonchery, a mere nine miles from Brichko, arguably the most strategically important point on the map of Bosnia. Situated in the north of Bosnia, Brichko is the only link between Republika Srpska's two halves, a corridor that was viciously fought over during the war. At the Dayton negotiations, Brichko was deemed so tactically vital to both sides that it was given a special autonomous status. Brčko is the only territory which is not part of either entities. And in case of any potential clashes or violence in Bosnia, uh, I'm of opinion that it will first start in Brčko. And I'm pretty sure that, that organizations such as these would be used as some sort of force in the beginning in order to create violence or, or spread terror among the local non-Serb population in Brčko. The potential threat posed by Sveti Georgie and other Russian-backed groups has to be seen in a new light following Putin's invasion of Ukraine. We've seen not only an assault uh, on a sovereign country, uh, but we have seen also an assault on the rules-based order. Uh, we, we are going into uncharted territory, so there are uh, risks. The goal is Russia doesn't want Ukraine in NATO and European Union. Isto tako, Rusija ne želi niti jednu zemlju Zapadnog Balkana, ni u NATO, ni u Evropskoj Uniji. And as fighting intensified in Ukraine, Dusanka Majkic, an MP from Dodik's governing party, tweeted this. A reminder, Moscow said in March 2021 that it would react if Bosnia and Herzegovina take steps towards joining NATO. Don't say later that you didn't know. But Bosnia needs no reminding of the danger it is in. Its graveyards are filled with victims. Its towns and villages depleted of inhabitants. I lost my father. I lost my 45 family members here. My school friends my teachers. When the Serb army arrived at Charakovo, Subdin was rounded up with the other men and boys and taken to a nearby river where they were told to swim. Once in the water, they were to be shot. You are looking directly to the eyes of, to, of death. And you are just praying to be fast, you know, not, not to suffer. Yeah. And then somebody started to scream, no, no, no. And that soldier who ordered us to go to swim, he ordered us to get back. And it was bus driver of my school bus and a good friend of my father. And he decided to rescue me and my brother. And we are the only survivors in my neighborhood. Subdin was taken to the concentration camp at Tenepolye and eventually freed, weighing just 46 kilos. We had nothing to eat. You are thirsty, but you are not hungry. That's me. When I was liberated, I am giving an interview to British TV. You know, we are politically devastated. Let us talk about Parliament of Republika Srpska. You have 83 members of the Parliament, and only three of them are Bosniaks. Milorad Dodik realized that he can do it. You know, who is going to stop him? <laughs> 